Hi there, welcome to Daily Mana. Just as our body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. One time, I was staring at a huge photograph or a picture that we have as a family in the house. And in that photo was where my two children, my wife, and myself. And as I was staring at the photo, one of the things that I have noticed is that only me was having a dark, or it, it was only me who was dark among the four of us. And then I look at the faces of my two children. They, their resemblance are really more towards their mom rather than me. So I look different. Only there are, there are some aspects, few aspects of their physical appearance that are from me, have a resemblance with me. And one of those is their eyebrows. You look at their eyebrows, it's so closely similar with mine. At least, there is something in them that resembles with me. Well, children often are like reflections of the image of the parents. When you look at them, they are not just physically um, similar with their parents, but at the same time, there are times that we notice behavior of the parents that are somehow reflected in the lives of the children. This is a natural thing that happens because it's the parents that the children look up to and the behavior of the parents, the way they move, the way they talk, the way they mingle with people may influence the children. And that is why oftentimes when you look at the children, the, children, the people who would observe sometimes would be able to say, you really act like your father, you really behave like your mom because they are reflecting who their parents are in many ways. Well, in the spiritual aspect of life, we are God's children and we must as well reflect a character of God. And one of the most important characters that God is showing to us that we must reflect toward others is the character of love. Let's look at verse John 4, 16 to 21. And this is what he said. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God. And God abides in him. By this love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. One of the peculiar characteristics that God has and not only that he possesses it, but he displayed it to us, is love. We will not go to any other illustrations that we could ever imagine. Just look at the cross. The cross is the ultimate exemplification of the love of Jesus for you. And if you would be asked how much, some people would say, I love you this much, I love you this much, I love you this much. But Jesus at the cross says, I love you this much. And that love is given to you. You became the object of his love. And because of that, you have a concrete experience of the love of God. And we ought to reflect that love, not only reflecting it back to him, but reflecting it towards our brother and our sister. Because we belong to God, our behavior shall reflect the behavior of God. Well, it's hard because sometimes we are exposed to unlovable people. Sometimes we are exposed to people who are difficult to love. But don't go into the conclusion right away. Why? 
Because before going to that idea of the difficulty of loving about others who are difficult to be loved, take note that we are individuals who are sinners and we were not easy to love. But Jesus, because of His grace and love and goodness, He displayed this death that He has on the cross for Him to be able to exemplify to you how much He loves you. Now, with that love that Christ has given you, love others. So I am praying that we'll be able to exemplify this in our lives. After all, the Holy Spirit lives in us, and as Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Take note of the singular, what is this display of the matter? That the fruit singular of the Spirit is singular, love singular. And if one loves, it would have some different forms of ramification. You will be kind, you will be displaying self-control, you will be patient because you love. And this is the kind of love that Jesus has for us, and we must reflect it towards others. I am praying that we'll be able to bring this into our actions every day. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you will continue to touch the hearts of your people. Today, we will be engaging with many individuals around us, including individuals who are difficult to love. But because you loved us first, because you have given us a concrete example of that unconditional love, we desire with your help through the work of your Holy Spirit that we would be able to love difficult people around us. Help us to love our boss. Help us to love our brothers and sisters. Help us to love even our enemy. Because we can do this when we love others with the love that you have for us. Thank you, Lord. And we bless your name for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.